in this lecture we will go ahead and understand what is gdp of an economy what is the meaning of gdp we will also go in and understand what are the different approaches to calculate gdp we'll try and see what is the difference between nominal and real gdp and finally we will try and see how the gdp deflator is defined and how gdp deflator defines the relationship between nominal gdp and real gdp so let's dive right in now imagine a very simple isolated economy and imagine that there are just two uh, you know two parts of the economy or two players of the economy one are the households and other are the firms so we have households here and we have firms here now the factors of production are there in two forms one is the labor and one is the capital the factors of production labor are the one that go to the companies they work in the companies and in exchange the companies give them wages and you know if somebody is giving their capital to the company in return company is giving them profit so it's like few of the people are actually lending their capital to the company maybe they're giving their land to the company other people are giving their labor to the company and in either case the company is going them going ahead or the firm is going ahead and giving back some profit or some wages to these suppliers of factors of production similarly these suppliers of factors of production are getting goods and services from the companies it can be anything from a pizza burger to delivery of goods to something which can be related to let's say complex for example bricks for example anything which is related to uh, a raw material which can be reused for the production maybe cotton so all the goods and services are bought from the firm by these laborers and by the households and in return these households are actually spending some money to buy these goods and services so they are doing certain level of expenditure on these goods and services the factors of production are basically getting these wages and income this is known as in you know wages and profit this is known as income of the factors of production similarly the money that the factors of production are paying to the firm is known as expenditure of the factors of production so majorly what we have done is we have divided through this uh, you know two uh, two player economy we have divided this entire concept in two main parts one where we are showing something which is related to expenditure and other where we are showing something related to the income notice that because there is no leakage or injection into this flow we are not assuming that any additional income is flowing into the flow into the circular flow of income neither are we assuming that any income is going out of this circular flow of income what really happens in this scenario is that income is equal to expenditure whatever the factors of production are earning from the firms that is exactly what they are spending to buy goods and services from the firm if we understand the circular flow of income then we can go ahead and define the following two concepts the first concept is known as aggregate output aggregate output of an economy is the value of 
all the goods and services that are produced in a specified period of time. So whatever goods and services are produced within a period of one year, particularly, we talk about a period of time, usually in terms of one year. So whichever goods and services are produced within the country, within an economy, within a given or a specified period of time, that is known as the aggregate output of the country. Similarly, the aggregate income of an economy is the value of all the payments earned by the suppliers of the factors used in the production of goods and services. So ideally, who is the supplier in our case in, in this, uh, you know, two-part circular economy flow, who's the supplier? We have the labor or the household as the supplier of the factor of production. So whatever income is being earned by the household, whatever payment is being done by the companies to the households in terms of wages, and profits that is known as the aggregate income of any economy because we assumed that the aggregate income of the economy is equal to the aggregate output of the economy we can go ahead and say that the income and output are equal and they are actually equal to the expenditure of the economy. So just try and understand this concept well. First of all, the households are using some income to buy the goods and services. How much goods and services can they buy? They can buy only those many goods and services, how much income they have with themselves. How much income do they have with themselves? They have the same income as the firms are going to give it to them. And how are the firms going to give income to them? The firms would be giving income to them only after the households are going to purchase something from them and incur some expenditure. So in that sense, all these three things are interrelated to each other and they are closely connected and are equal to each other. The aggregate output is the value of all the goods and services that are produced in a country. Aggregate expenditure is the money that the firms, you know, sorry, the money that the consumers are spending to buy these goods and services. And aggregate income is the value of all the payments that are earned by the labor and capital of the country. So labor and capital being provided by the households of the country. In this sense, because all the three things equate to each other, we can say that aggregate output is equal to the aggregate expenditure is equal to the aggregate income of any country. Now, this is known as the circular flow of income. In the circular flow of income, we can have many agents. But what we are just doing is the simplest uh, circular flow of in income, where we just have two agents one is called the households and the other are called the firms. Now, you know, just remember in the background that we went ahead and we assumed that this is an isolated economy. So there are no exports or imports, no good that is being produced is going outside the economy. Whatever good is being produced stays within the economy. So, the local goods and services have to be given to the people within the country, have to be purchased by the residents of the country. Similarly, 
because we are assuming that there is no savings that is being done and we are also assuming that there are no exports or imports whatever money is being spent by the households has to be given to the firms of the country the firms cannot sorry the households cannot save money right now that is what we are assuming the households cannot go ahead and buy goods from outside their country the households are assumed to spend their entire income because they cannot save so because they have to spend their entire income and they have to only spend it on the goods that are being produced in their economy ideally whatever will be the value of goods produced that much would be the expenditure of the household right so in that sense we understand that the aggregate output of the household the aggregate output of the economy has to be equal to the expenditure of the households similarly you have to also understand that whatever expenditure the households are doing that has to be equal to the income of the household again because of the same reason that they are not saving anything so whatever they are earning they are spending the entire amount so therefore even if i write this equal to the income of the household i would not be wrong these are basically doing the same thing the only thing that we would be doing a little later as we go through the course and we will understand that thing is that you know aggregate output aggregate income aggregate expenditure all refer to different ways of decomposing the same quantity we are ideally doing we are ideally decomposing the same thing right we are saying in one sense that these are the goods that are being produced then we are saying that okay supposedly i am telling you that let's say that um, you know 100 units of goods are being produced and you know supposedly let's say that the price of each unit of good is 10 rupees then this means that i am producing goods worth 1000 rupees if i am producing goods worth 1000 rupees then i am assuming that households are also buying from me worth 1000 rupees because whatever is being produced is also being sold and if households are buying from me worth 1000 rupees this means that they are doing an expenditure worth 1000 rupees but they can do an expenditure worth 1000 rupees only when they earn an income of 1000 rupees so we are assuming that you know the income earned is also 1000 rupees also how are the households earning this income they are earning this income only when firms are able to give them money how are the firms giving them money only when the firms are able to sell these goods and services worth 1000 rupees firms are going to go back and distribute this 1000 rupees to various households so the total income would again be 1000 rupees so ideally we understand that how much ever goods are produced the money that is earned from them is again given back to the households that is being spent by the households that is given back to the firms and firms are back giving it to the households so this is a flow which is interlinked right but we are doing the same thing ideally now this thing that we are doing this is known as gross domestic product so this circular flow of income that we just defined helps us to understand something which is known as the gdp of any economy what is the gdp of the economy if someone may ask then the gdp of the economy is the value of all goods and services 
that are produced within one particular time period usually the time period is one year you can have it for two years also but usually we always take the time period to be one year also the gdp of the economy will always be determined by what is being sold in the market if your services or goods cannot be sold in the market for example the services of a housewife housemaker then that will not be included in gdp so the non market services are not included in gdp again transfer payments or my father giving me pocket money or you know somebody giving me a gift will not be included in gdp only the value of final goods and services would be included in gdp i would not include the goods and services which are intermediate goods for example i will not include the goods and services that are used in the production of the final goods and services to understand that you can take the example of cotton being used to produce cloth i am already adding the value of cloth in my gdp i do not have to add the value of cotton that is being used to produce cloth so let's write down based on these three things what is gdp of the economy so gross domestic product of any economy 